an emergency call and this is our time of the month where we get to come together and talk about books and discover some amazing literature works. My name is Peter Okonko, the founder of the Akure Book Club and this is the July edition of the Book Club Meeting. Excitement, I welcome you all to the third edition of the Akure Book Club. Thank you, I love that. <laughs> Today we come together, not just as readers, but as a community of minds eager to explore, discuss, and celebrate the rich world of literature. Over the past editions, we have journeyed through the pages of great poetry, each offering us new perspective, inspiring thoughts, and enriching discussions. Our club has grown, not just in number, but in the depth of our conversations and the strength of our connections. It is heartwarming to see how literature continues to bridge gaps, foster understanding, and build a vibrant community here in Accra. As we begin the third edition, we are reminded of the transformative power of literature. It has the ability to ignite our imagination, challenge our beliefs, and inspire us to dream bigger and think deeper. Today, we celebrate not just the book we read, but the discussion they spark, the friendship they forge, and the growth they stimulate. I would like to take this moment to express my heartfelt gratitude to everyone who has contributed to the sources of the Prayer Book Club, to our dedicated members who bring their unique insights and enthusiasm to each meeting, to our guest speakers and authors who share their expertise and passions with us, and to our organizing team whose hard work and commitment make each edition possible. Thank you. As we embark on this new edition, let us continue to embrace the joy of reading, the power of dialogues, and the beauty of shared experiences. Let us open our mind to new ideas, our hearts to new stories, and our soul to the boundless possibility that literature offers. And once again, I want to say welcome everyone to the Agrippa Book Club. Thank you for coming. Yeah, before I go on, please allow us to do a short introduction. I'll be passing the mic around to you. Tell us your name. And yeah, I think that'll be fine. Right? So I'll love to start with you. Okay, so my name is John Oh, Jedi. Oh, sorry for saying that, you know. Uh, I know <laughs> there's one JD. And it's also my thing, I'm a writer, fiction writer. And yeah, yeah to add, JD is the first person to read The Secret Love of a Master Gay's Wife. Please give us a round of applause. Hi, I'm Jedi. My name is Nino Tim. I'm neither a writer or a uh, However, uh, I do love. Fiction. So yes, uh, <laughs> 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 He's the second person to read the book. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. Um, I'm a writer, 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 I'm a writer
amazing. You're welcome. The mask guy. Hello. Uh, it is in my That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Victoria Chime. I'll be your host. I'm a writer, a reader, and everything you can think of. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being very honored. Thank you so much. Even though African readers are two African writers, I was a so thank you so much for coming. First of all, how many of us read the book? It's a bit like oh, gosh, Thank you so so much. So who would love to give us a summary for those that read the book? Who would love to give us a summary of the book? Who would love to give us a summary of the book? There's a mic here in case you want to talk. Yeah, we're starting with you, right? She's going. To, she's going to speak. Why? Okay. So I'm supposed to give you a summary. Yeah, it's okay from all the things that you remember and. Okay. All right. So. Okay. Oh, all right, all right. So, um, I think the the whole book is it's a prose, course it's a prose, but yeah. it's more of a family drama, uh, a polygamy, polygamy family drama, and there is the head of the family that's um Baba Segi himself, and then he has four wives, four big four. <laughs> Big four, and from the beginning of the book, I think they wrote in the POV of um, point of view, um, Bolanli's point of view, that was supposed to be the new wife, the latest wife in that house. And she seemed, I would say, she seemed like she was just desperate to just, you know, leave a current situation because the situation was not spoken about at first so i feel like she was desperate to leave her, her current situation and just you know she was ready to go anywhere and she decided to take off baba segi as her husband and then when she got to the house as the latest wife you know how women are jealous the first wife the second the third wife um was not much of i think she was quite gentle she was a docile person actually but the first wife was i would say wicked in my own point wicked the second wife was ah uh, she was jealous too she was a very jealous person and well that was it so uh moving on i started reading from the point of view of um from the point of view of bolanley and it went in depth to a past lives to her past life how that um how that she was she was raped at the age of 15 i think and she could not tell her mom she could not tell her mom and i felt like her parents were i wouldn't say they had she had a good a the very the perfect parenting because one of the one of the parents which is the father was like uninvolved usually uninvolved not like it was absent but it was like usually uninvolved and then the mother was too involved. She was too involved. She 
she really pressured her a lot and her younger sister also and then when she got raped she was i guess she was too ashamed to tell her mom who put who had high hopes for her to you know be. uh Bonale was the only graduate actually in the polygamy family of um baba segi and well the eighth of those women or not the fact that she was a graduate and all was was a pawn in their eyes so it was the, the old the, their thoughts were, were very funny and then um i think she had some affairs and blah 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 that one um i was not very interested in that but she had some affairs and all that and you know she was she was she was just like a shell of herself she was not really um she was not really she was just going with the flow of life she was not making something for herself and her mother and her parents, her friends were against a marriage with um, Baba Segi. But well, she, only she knew the pain that was in her heart. So well, I fell for her. <laughs> that was it. And then um, the POV of Mama Segi, that was the first wife. They call her Mama Segi. And uh, okay, she was wicked. She was still wicked, even in that a pov i don't i don't that's just my own point of view i don't know but i feel like she was still kind of wicked even though she not really um i wouldn't say while growing up she really had much um i wouldn't say she really had much um she really had much silver life because she said her mother was a businesswoman and apparently they fought it on her and she had no plans to um to get married because my mother had this um this, this prejudice against men because they will not take care of you. Men will take care of you. <laughs> Just find the right one. Um yes, so she was not really into that. But then when her mother realized her obsession over money as per businesswoman, so they forced her to get married and alas she got married to Baba Segi as the first wife. And then Baba Segi, the the great man, the man with the Ego, I would say he has a great. He, he's he's so proud of himself. Like he he prides in his in his manhood, and <laughs> and the ending of it all is is just very funny. But oh well, I would say it's it's good to be confident in yourself. But man, mm -mm. all right, <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot, really. So um, then we have um Iafemi. That was the second wife of Baba Segi. And a background too. Ah, uh, was really pitiful. But then, ah, uh, ah, uh, no, I wouldn't side with her though. He, um, her parents died, and her uncle and his wife they took over her family properties, and then they deceived her to go work in a place. And it turns out she would be the housemaid. She would be an housemaid, and then from then on, you know what happens? The, the like say Clitch, yeah, the son of the so-called employ employer started sleeping with her and all and well she thought she thought of him as an escape from suffering and who knew it was actually the beginning of it but then yes that was a pov and then Iatope, Iatope, i feel like Iatope is she's a butterfly <laughs> a butterfly that was like you know caged because um looking at her background she was she was just she was a very gentle person and very innocent at that when baba segi married her because um her father traded her for for um business purpose actually because her father was a farmer and he traded her for business purpose that's all i can say hey, you read it when you read it um and then she all of a sudden she got married i understand that kind of feeling you know you just moved from your comfort zone and all of a sudden you are out there with someone or a stranger in fact because the, the man was is really something and then well she got married and also oh i think i was spoken about bolanley bit yes then moving on there was this thing actually when i was reading the book it went from um Iafemi and Okay. Right. So um when I was reading the book, it it started from Iafemi and um Iasegi, that was the first wife and the second wife. They um they colluded and they were talking about stuff like 
um Bolali not giving birth and all. And I was thinking maybe it was like charm. They wanted to charm her. And I was like, okay, so these people, you know, as by bad people, okay, maybe they want to use voodoo or not. And all. I was like, okay. But then later I realized that way too. This is not charm. This is, it was actually poison they were using on her. Like, they wanted to use poison on her so that would she die or what? But then. That was it. Then they had secret plans, but I guess Yatope was not really into it. Yatope was not really into it, and you know she was, she was, she was more of this. She was the snitch. Yes, she looked like the snitch. Not like not that she actually snitched, but she looked like the snitched among the three wives colluding against the new wife. She looked like the snitch. So they removed that from the plan, and it was just Yafemi and um, Mama Segi. And then they started then. The author started revealing, and it was funny. The fact that no, it was not even Mama Segi first. It was Yafemi first. Yafemi, our children. In fact, all our children were not from um were not for Baba Segi. Was not Baba Segi was not the father of all our children. Oh, I think she had only one child. I'm not sure. Um, Aki also. Yeah, they were not the father of our children. It was the um the son of our employ our employer when she was still a maid is the one who's the father of her children oh i think she had two children and they were spoiled like she spoils them as per you know yeah yeah um, oh yeah the father yeah their father uh, is um is from a rich family so she prided herself in that fact that oh our children are not like the rest so she spoils them that their background are different from others and well that was it and it was it was very funny because um mama segi was threatening yatokwe that she, she would reveal her secrets and then when the secrets will not come out again yatokwe's children were not for baba segi again ah how is this wait what's what's happening so then um it then showed that it was Mama Segi that was pushing them. I was like, perhaps she was, maybe she was deliberately doing it. That she wanted to push them to their destruction. That, you know, one day the truth will come out and all the wives will be sent back in and she'll be the only one left. That was what I was thinking. So, um, Yatafa's children were for one meat seller like that from the market and, ah, okay. <laughs> But then later, um, yes, later, Baba Segi had issues with Bolanli. Um, that was the last wife, the new wife, the last wife. Not about a um, childlessness cause. I think it has been about half a year since she got married to Baba Segi and she had nothing on her. And then she wouldn't, she wouldn't follow Baba Segi to Abalist, to anybody to go and because she was like every all of them they are like scams and then she didn't want to go to um prophets or this prophet you know how you know how nigerians are now like. so um then there was this um there was this character too um they call him teacher i mean master i'm not sure teacher oh yeah teacher thank you um teacher then he gave the advice that since bolale is a graduate of course she would do things in the modern way that she would want to go to an hospital so he suggested and baba segi took it and i mean like baba segi also apart from the fact that he prides himself in his manhood is also he he loves to belittle women woman generally like he, he loves women worshiping him like he wants to be worshipped as that the god the yeah the god the god of the house so um I, 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 have, I feel like at every chance, he always tries to believe to, um, he, he always tries to believe to his, his wives, especially if they are going against him. And for Bolanle, she's, I would say, even for the fact that she willingly accepted to marry him, she was, she was not as, she was not as docile as she was when she got married. Because when she got married, Baba Segi saw her as, oh, this woman, I conquered her. She's now mine and she's she's meek for me. But then turns out Bonale was just hiding. Hiding uh, you know, inborn inborn I, I feel like it does happen, it's just the way she is though. And then 
she was he realized she was a tough kid and he would not hesitate to believe her in front of everybody anybody at all and then when he got to the hospital and the doctor was like okay um this and this and Babasegi then knew about Bonalis past that she she had um like she, she had um she had um her first intercourse at the age of 15 and well his whole head just tumbled i'm like but then i'm like why is he so surprised i mean when you marry that she obviously she wasn't a virgin so why are you so and i mean like he also has um anxiety disorder that man because anytime he anytime something is bothering him he he needs he needs <laughs> his body reacts to it and I think that's those are symptoms of like anxiety disorder because I have it a lot sometimes too. I get that. So he has to like he has to empty his body so one way or the other, whether by vomiting or going to the toilet. So it was I mean like that was what happened to him. So at that point, he had he just had to leave the place and the doctor continued. And then moving on, they conducted test and it turns out Bonale was like fatal and she was okay. And it was the husband they asked Babasegi to come for the test. And he also he also had the test. And then it turns out that there was not a single living spam in Babasegi. Manhood shattered. Totally shattered. But then that was not even the point because bro did not know anything. It was well, things were still going well for him. And then but the doctor didn't believe it because the man was like, ah. I have, I have wives and they have children. They have children. There is Segi, there is Akin, there is this one, there is that one. Both boys and girls. And, you know, it was hard to believe that. Okay. Okay. How about we talk to the wife, the wives then? So, um, they asked Baba Segi to bring one of his wives to the hospital with him so that he can ask some questions. And then they brought Mama Segi. Mama Segi as her first wife. She came and... And there, then, she spilled the truth that our children are also not for Baba Segi. Ah. Segi. Segi that we have called, we have um, endeared with Baba Segi. Because, in fact, I didn't even know Baba Segi's name until I checked the family tree again. I didn't know his actual name. It was Baba Segi, Baba Segi. So, Baba Segi is not Baba Segi. Ah, okay. <laughs> this is very serious. And then, and then... Um, the man just, um, it was, okay, Baba Segi was left there because he was shocked, so shocked. He could not move and it was just, it was, it was there. Then Mama Segi just stood up. She was like, well, things has gotten to this point. If it wants to spoil, let it spoil. Then she went out and she got to the bus, um, their driver, the driver of Baba Segi. And, ah, Jesus. The driver was actually the father of Mama Segi's children. Every one of them. It was, <laughs> it was, it was so funny. Because like, even the man, the driver himself was so afraid. When Mama Segi came out, he just, he gave an excuse that he wants to go to his hometown. And, well, bro did not know. He said he wants to go to his hometown. And, well, I think that's how the driver left. So when he got to, oh yeah, I skipped the parts. At that time, at that time when um, the whole issue with going to the hospital, having tests, I think the first wife, Mama Segi, tried to poison um, Bolanle. I think they were having one occasion and she tried to poison Bolanle. She put poison, I think cobra poison or something, inside Bolanle's food. But then I think Bolanle did not eat it, gave it to Segi. That was Mama Segi's first child. Gave it to Segi and well, Segi ate it. And in the middle of the night, she was just, you know, she was just in another state and she was in the hospital and different things, different things, different things. Well, Segi knew that it was it was her mother that poisoned the food. She knew, she knew, and then she asked her mother and you know stuff because her mother, I mean, her mother is her mother, of course. So she believed that. It would, it would definitely be a mother since she was she was the one who served the food she was the one who cooked and served the food so definitely she was the one who put something inside that she knew what she did and well what could the mother do and then by the time they came back yeah by the time the father came back from uh um, what's it called oh Bolanle did not follow them when they were going to the hospital so when baba segi came back 
Baba Segi called all his wives, and he realized since he has realized that all none of none of his none of his children are his children. Actually, he was just he was raising other men's children in his own house, and he had so he had so much pride in his manhood. He boasted around the neighborhood and everyone to everyone who cared to listen that oh yes, I have children. I have this and that. I I'm the conqueror of the women in my house. So well. And when he got home, well, Segi was back from the hospital then, but she was in a very terrible state. Well, I think she was she was just let's say three inches to death actually, because from the way the author described that, and that was it. So when he got home, he called the wives out. All of them were trembling because they knew well this over for us. Our husband has now found out our secret, the secret that we have kept for well years, I think. Yes, the secret we have kept for years, our husband has found out what will he do to us. So they were trembling because they don't know where to go. And especially for your family, because our so called husband, our so called um, father of our children, whom she, she was banking on that in case anything happened, she would escape with her children to the guy's place. The guy traveled out because his employer died. Um, his mother or grandmother, I think, sorry, grandmother, died and he just traveled out then. So he just all he left was a letter and yeah, Femi was in a terrible state because how does she want to raise the children if Baba Segi tells them to pack out? And as for Yadokwe, she can't possibly go back to Mitela. In fact, that's even if the Mitela is still around that side. Is still where he is, if she still knows his whereabouts. As for Mama Segi, what can she say? In fact, she dares not in fact, till the end of the story, actually, Baba Segi did not know that his driver was actually the father of Mama Segi's children because I'm sure that man would have had an heart attack. That one is definite because ah, Rada has been following him for a long while. For years, in fact, even before, for years. So, um, the, the highlight is that Segi died. That's what like in their living room where because even Baba Segi just he did not have any strength and Mama Segi was like, Oh, she has she has she has spoiled her own life because it was born unless she wanted to arm and well it turns out that child was the one who took it and that's why you can say that well bad things can always happen to bad people too. It's not only good people bad things happen to but bad things there's something called karma. So well I feel bad for Segi though because um, from uh, from the way she was described and the way uh, our siblings, um, the way our siblings were very emotional when she died, I feel like she was she was the she was a very good sibling. Apart from the fact that she was hostile towards Bolanle, uh, but that was a mother's directive. But then overall, she was a very good child, and it was so sad that she had to die. But well, she died and she died. Then. Um, what else again? I think that was yes. Um, as for Baba Segi, well, the wives, since they had nowhere to go, they knew they had no other options. All they could do was, well, count the tiger because even and I feel like they took advantage of the fact that Baba Segi prides, he, he has so much pride in his manhood that he cannot even bear to tell the outsiders that oh, all the children in my house are not, they are not mine and. I am unable to give children to. I'm unable to um to have my own child to have my own child. So the wives that was especially Mama Segi since well she knew him like the back of her hand so she played she played him and she was like outside that she don't know what's going on in the house that she pleads that it doesn't matter whether. They are related by blood or not. That yeah. those children, they will always be his children. Will always be his children. I don't know. Well, but then that he has taken care of them for a long while, and they should just continue. Um, they should just continue the way everything is. That they should not, or else um, they will be disgraced and um, ashamed outside, and especially for Baba Segi himself. And well, what can man do? Man cannot give birth. Man cannot have children, even in the nearest future. So man must agree, and man agreed. So Baba Segi, well, he agreed, and he let them stay in his house and living as a family. As for Bolale, well, 
it's a good thing for her that Baba said you could not. So she she left. Um, she had to leave because since Baba said you could not give her a child, I mean, someone that is fatter, obviously she cannot stay in the house and then be two timing again. So she just said she'll leave, and then she left. She left. Um, but only our, um our, our relationship with our parents were were not very good, and even our even our younger sister, because our younger sister also felt that well. Um, because Bolali could not fulfill the dreams of her mom, then the mom put all the pressure on her, and then, but, then, but anyways, she went another way too, but, well, they all reconciled so one way or the other, and, well, that was it. So, the secret lives of, um, the secret lives of the wives of Papa Segi, ah, it was, it was drama on drama, and the hand, the, that plot twist at the end of the driver, and Mama Segi was, it was very shocking to me, to be honest. It was very shocking. Like, ah, oh, dear, she did You did it close. Ah, it was, it was very funny, but uh, it was a nice book. I enjoyed it. It was thrilling. And I would say, well, the author did a good job. Uh, yes, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, right now, who else loves to give a review on the book? What was your favorite part and what was something you would absolutely decide? Mm -hmm. Your mother would love to hear from you. What's that thing you read in the book and you were like, what kind of author? To you, ma'am. Let's have to say that. Oh, you're over. I identify as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> ben, don't yes. You don't do that <laughs> okay. Right. So, um, what do I love about the book? Or particularly now. Okay. Let me say, Bonandi. Yeah, Bonandi's character is actually pretty interesting, such that um, even though the entire house was was hostile to her, she still came in with the idea of, guys, I want to change you, say, like I want to change your life because when she first got in. And um, she received that style, you know, the, the act, the style attitude. She was like, hmm, interesting. These people, they, 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 they don't respond um, certain ways because they are not mannered, because they are not educated. And she was like, Emma, worry. I will take my time and um, I will help you to become better. Such that the reason why I'm spending my time here is because I want to help you to, to be more enlightened. And that was wild for me. Like somebody is treating you this way and you still have this long term vision for them. It's, it's pretty wild. So yes, that's it. You don't have any not for now. Not oh yes. <laughs> so you must pardon me, right? I, I stopped halfway, right? Mm -hmm. I stopped halfway, like the book. I did not complete it. <laughs> Um, I would say that each and every one of the wives had a distinct um, happening in their childhood that formed who they were. But Iyasegi, I don't know if you people uh, got this from the book, but Iyasegi is attracted to women. Yes. 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 She's attracted to women, and I don't think she ever, she never thought she was going to get married, especially to who she married. Oh, Baba Segi's wealth is from Yasegi, basically, and for Yatokwe, the second wife, she was, she was. Uh, gentle but lazy and I felt her her father felt like since she's not really doing anything for me why not just marry her off and make her useful I mean if she wasn't because she didn't like going to the farm to harvest or doing she just liked playing with sand and grass and everything for Yafemi it was the rejection of her uncle and her uncle's wife after her parents died. 
and the way her employer treated her when she had to go work as a as a maid and all of that. And for Bonale, it was the fact that she was raped and she got pregnant and aborted the child. All of that, her parents did not know. Like she said, her father was not involved. Her mom was too... Not the kind of person you can talk to because she was always pushing her dreams onto her children. And all those things just defined who those women were at the end of the day. I'm not saying it's good. It's not, it's not good because <laughs> the way the whole story went, <laughs> the way Iyasegi told Iyatokwe how they make children, how they get children in the family, and then Iyafemi did not even wait for anybody to tell her. <laughs> <laughs> I, think she, I think she went to the, the meat seller. The no, that was, Iyatokwe yeah. went to the meat seller. Iyatokwe yeah. went to the meat seller. Yeah, family went with the son of her employer, and the story was nice, but there were so many shocking things. <laughs> so many shocking things. And yeah, I also feel bad for Segi because the way she was described, she was a very devoted sister that all of her siblings and her half siblings, it's not easy for in a polygamous family for half siblings to look up to you from another mother. It's not really easy. But she was that role model for all of them. And it actually pained me when she died. <laughs> but do I have any critics? Mm, I would say that there was just so many things going on in the book. Before we got over shock of something, there was something else that was equally shocking. But the book was a very nice book, all in all. Ah, okay. <laughs> Uh, I love the fact that uh, the book was written in different characters' point of view. <clears throat> in, uh, in chapter one or chapter two, you have this one telling the story. You move to the next one, so you have another person telling the story. And on and on and on, it keeps going in a beautiful way. Um, Bonale, uh, yeah, Bonale is my most favorite character, I'd say. And all of them actually had a terrible past. All of the wives had a terrible past. And Baba Shege is such... Baba Shege, I think Baba Shege is, to me is like a pitiful character. I felt so sorry for him. I mean, you know, with the boast, with the arrogance, the pride, you know, the fact that you've spoken to your friends, I do this, I do that. And the way the, the wife described him secretly, like it's a bag of stuff like that. They just The wedding is just so... I'm like, oh my God, that's too bad. So, and again, I, I, I don't like the fact that quite, the book has quite a lot of vulgar words, yeah? It's fine, though, but uh, coming from the wives and all manners of things, they will say, you just call me, jump, uh, jump on top of me and pull. Yeah, this is my clear description. It's my clear description. I didn't finish the book, though. I stopped, I think, with 130. It's my clear description from, I, I'm not quite sure who the person is, who worked for grandmother, yeah, family, right? Who slept on the staircase, and now the 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 son of the grandmother always come to sleep with her whenever they are not around. And the most hilarious part to me is the part when she went to the market and somebody came to preach Jesus to her. It was like the best thing, the way the writer wrote that the best thing looks as if the best thing is Jesus blessing. He looked at him from the from from the from the toe from the head to the toe. He described his shirts, his trousers. And he was like, well, the only thing that made me listen to him was it, it sounds a bit lovable. And the fact that she herself, she's tired, so she's looking for... And she bought her a Coke. Because like, that's the first time she ever drank Coke in 21 or... Is it 21 or 24 years? Yeah, full bottle of in 15 years. So that was like, wow, that's very funny. And after on and on and on, the way she was treated was quite bad. And the fact that she was excited when the preacher told her that Sinners will go to a fire. I was like, oh, I want grandmother to go to a fire. <laughs> so that part was so hilarious to me. And uh, the fact that when, when grandmother had, was it that she fell down? She fell down in the bedroom. Then she was, she couldn't do more thing. The way the writer put the way, um, the writer that, you know, she was quite excited at the first time that she fell down. She thought, you know, uh, she'll be very, very happy. She, 
But the fact that are uh, falling down added more burden to her, and she was like, "Oh goodness, this is quite terrible." And the the another option I love to say is the fact that I think it was Tunde, the son of grandmother, Tunde, who always told her that do you want to spend your entire life here. Yeah? I mean, you're 21 years old. You can you can always look for something else to do, blah blah blah, stuff like that. And she eventually took into her advice. Yeah, I think the first um the first child from her was from Tunde. I think she was pregnant before she entered the, the house. I don't know. Then she, she told she told the uh, pregnant yeah. about her. So she was like, Oh, it doesn't really mind, you know. So all of them were just on all, all the three wives, Ya Shegi, Ya Tokwe, Ya Femi, the three of them, they had a terrible past, including Bolali herself. They all had terrible past. They all had so to them, Baba Shegi is like a shelter to their um to their terrible past. Like they're taking advantage of it. Yeah, the first one, the second one. And the fact that they were all forced, I think, except Bolale who choose to marry him willingly. And again, Bolale went through quite a lot of pain initially. Um, I love her resilience. I love her temperament. That's for the fact that they, they treated her badly. She was quite calm. She was quite calm. She would pull the children together. The children loves her. Even though then, yeah, yeah. There's a particular one that I think it was Yafemi. She was like, Yafemi children are just like, ah, they wouldn't listen to stuff like that. You know, I just roommate the whole entire book. But then it was quite lovely to me. I, I totally enjoyed it. There are quite a lot of things ongoing there. Uh, the visit to the doctor. And if not for Bonlali, the secret will have. It will have stayed forever, you know, if not for the fact that she. And that's why they always thought our present is going to spoil a lot of things for them in the family. But they always thought, let's, let's find something else to do. But a uh, more hilarious part to me was when Yashegi came to, I think it was Yatoko, the second wife. Yatoko was the second wife. And I think then she had three children. Then she was not telling like, like, the way you are going is too much. Are you ashamed of yourself? Like you went to her head sleeping with another man. So she was surprised that how did she know? You know, Yasha is the first wife, so she already knows that her husband is important. Anybody that is coming in would have to figure out a way to cut up for themselves to get a child, etc. And when Balali came in, the fact that she couldn't conceive, they were like trying to do something just to push her away. To they they conceive and was it Juju or Ham? They caught in her room. They placed it there. They got it from an herbalist, I think. Okay, they made it themselves. <laughs> they are so hilarious, really. It was two of them that did that. The other one did not go along because it was like, why would you treat somebody that's not done anything to you, blah, 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 stuff like that. So that's a little... Baba Shegi doesn't really calm down. He always goes alongside with whatever is being told. It was just a roller coaster, really. It's a very... Quite fun, really, and... Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. As question come alongside, I would love to answer. Is anybody, I need critics right now. Critics. Yeah. The only flaw that I found with the book was that it was just a tad unrealistic. Because looking for the perspective of Baba Sagina, I'm criticizing his own character. Because how will you have five, six, seven children in the house? And you will not be able to tell that none of them look like you. I was just looking there. Nigga, how can you not tell? You have seven children in the house. And you can't even question one day that none of these children look like me. Okay, granted, most of them look like their mother. But at least the ones that are even the guys, at least they have like two or three sons. At least one of them should, be able to, should look like you. You should be able to tell that something is fishy somewhere. Mm-hmm. And with the, with the way they move around in the house, you should be able to tell that something is off with the way these two men are acting. He has Egi, from the fir- I think from the first or two or three outings that he had talked her that she went to meet the meat seller, he has Egi was able to grab that. This woman is seeing someone. Yeah. But you, that is your husband, she advised, she caught on to what he was doing within like a week when she started seeing the meat seller. 
But you that you are the man of the house, that you are sleeping with these women, that you are doing everything with them, you are not able to tell. Like it was, it was kind of shocking to me and mind boggling at the same time. That I don't think it's possible for you not to be able to tell out of six, seven children, eight, that none of them look like you and figure out that something is up. But have, since exactly, <laughs> it was his pride. His pride. He was so confident uh, in his virility, in his manhood, in his masculineness that it is not possible to the mind to the extent that exactly so he was so confident that his masculinity blinded him to the possibility of that kind of thing happening so he was completely blindsided by his masculinity he believed in his own potency to the extent that that thought didn't even cross his mind but if he was someone more open-minded someone more exposed the um, i'm talking in terms of education now he would have figured out that something was wrong so that's just the only bit I can talk about. Okay, so um, interestingly, I would not really call it a flaw, you know. Uh, cool, right? However, um, this part I like to say, you know, Bonali's mom, she during a pregnancy or during you know the author wrote something about how that um, Bolandi's mom um, grinds pepper during a period and then um, you know she consumes it a lot however over time then she finds that uh, she has lost a child like blood what do you call that thing please yes miscarriage and um two lines or um, three lines after we hear that um, Bonali, Bonali also is not a. Ah, how did she put it? Oh, that Bonali, but oh my God, that Bonali. Please, what's her name again? Bonali. She, she just, she dislikes her mom for that. Now it took us a while to understand why that was actually happening, and it was until we got to the fact that she was actually raped. That was like maybe two chapters away. So it was a a big distance. So yeah, that's a flaw for me. It would have been best if we understood almost like say five sentences away instead of having to wait for a long time to know why she ate it, um, um, Pepe and why she did not want to actually give it and why she wanted to leave the house particular. So yeah. Yes, you want to go. Alright, so I, I don't know if um, the book is going to be a general book that children or teens are supposed to read, but I don't recommend the book for children under 20. To be fair, I feel like it's in a good reason to read. I tell the ones that are already exploring me now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm mostly invested in this because I think like a lot of the scriptures in the book are they're very inappropriate or non-collaborative. I think that's mm. so. Uh, did we find new words in the book? New words. What's that? 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 What's no hope. And then you you know you read the book now. So we are starting with D U I K E R. D U I K E R. B or V? D. D U I K E R. 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 Now we're going to the next word, G U M S A W. Calm down. Now. <laughs> 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 so, uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's a voice or a phone. Do phone, right? Okay, so the next word is B U C H E R Y. B U C H E R Y. What do you hear? What is the name of the word? My apologies, Amir. Thank you. Thank you. Buttery. Buttery? Yeah, B-U-T-C-H-E-R-I. But you should say that it's completely destroyed something. Is that not related to... Um, 
Like him. Like him. Like him. Are we are we agreeing? So, how about <laughs> Yeah, like you butchered it, right? Yeah, I just don't believe you. So kill it, pata pata. Thank you so much. So it will also be a slaughterhouse. Yeah, it will be a slaughterhouse. But yeah, even if you use the context, that's what I'm saying. So what would be the people who for that? When you use a non-related word to classify something? Metaphor. In the UK, it's like... Metaphor. 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 Okay. Oh, like, I like, <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Is it an unrelated word? Is that a metaphor? An unrelated word to that right? Is a metaphor. Then is it is mm-hmm. a comparison. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, not the meaning, like just type using an unrelated word to classify something is called what? Eh? Mm. But we are asking what figure of speech does it fall under? You have to use the sentence. Who knows page what did we get butcher? Well, okay, okay, let's move on. So the next word is G A S H. G A S H. A what? A book. A. A big wound. Yeah. No, 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 no. When when um, Yashegi pushed Bonani and she hit her head to the wall. Yeah. So the next word is B A R B. Yeah, barb. Why do I feel like it's only the guys? Guys, what is happening, ladies? <laughs> okay, so okay, let's do something simpler. G O B L E T. Don't say anything. G O B L E T. God bless. Yes, G O B L E T. It's like a chalice. It's like a chalice. It's a kind of pop. Okay, so let's go to um, U N C A C H E D. Don't say anything. U N S C A C H. Okay. 
When baby goats are like jumping, you know, baby goats, the way they move, like they don't walk, they just jump around, like that's like, kind of like skipping, but I think with more movements. Is someone checking it out? Yeah. You don't. Yeah. I thought everybody did. He's right. It's like galloping. Yeah. The galloping of the goat. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Amazing. G-A-G. 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 Dark. Describe what I God is. What the meaning? Like rich. Yeah. 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 Oh wait, you like that sound the big like? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, S E R A W N Y. Looks very thin. Yeah, that's right. Okay, let's do G R A C U I C O U S. G R A C U I C O U S. Gratuitous. Gratuitous. What do you mean? Like you are kind of compensating someone for something. Yeah. Gratuity. Gratuity. Yeah. That's good. Okay, see why is not. Are you sure? Without yeah, any sense. But usually, I go get the conscious exactly. Just, so, just want to be really, 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 really. Okay. All right. So um, let's do C Y N I C I S M. Cynicism. Cynicism. C Y N I C I S M. Like you are not quick to believe what people say. Are you cynical? Cynical. When you're cynical, but the actual meaning of the uh, word. You're not, you're not quick to believe what people say. You're always looking for faults. You're always looking for the, whether the story is true or not. Something like. Are we agreeing to that? Yeah. yeah. Skeptical. Yeah, yeah. When you're skeptical. Yeah. skeptical. Okay. So this one. C H R O E S C H R O E S. Throws. Like when you are feeling pain and you're kind of like reacting to the pain, like if someone hits you or someone is convulsing, the movement yeah, of that is C C H R O E S. Yes. Yeah. Throws. It's usually, in the movement someone makes when the person is in pain. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So. Throws. <laughs> I, I said I wish I could, but I can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I actually can't. I've tried. I've tried. I've tried. I've tried. I just can't. Okay. Okay. So let's do P O N I A R D. P P O N I A R D. P O N R N P O N I A R D. No idea. What did I tell you that it's not pronounced like that? No idea. But that's the real thing. No idea. I've not. I've not. <laughs> <laughs> so who is bailing us out? I don't know. 
Is a dagger. So who remembered when someone used a poniard in the book? Someone held a knife to prevent something. It was like a, I think it was the Afemi. Yeah, when she was in grandma's house, I think she was planning something then. Then she decided to use it as a protective means. She was starting to do something, but she didn't do it eventually. You really remember now where we picked the word from. All right. So the last one, actually, we yeah, are more, but we don't have time. A K I M B O. Akimbo. Akimbo. As how? Is that what is pronounced as? Yeah. Akimbo. Yes. Wait, is it really an English word? It is an English word. Alright. So this is your cue to search the word in the book. Don't just read and assume a meaning in your head, please. Let's read words. These are these are these words you have seen them before, but because we don't use it every day. How many times have we addressed someone? Oh, you're studying Akimbo and I really like it. Aha. It sounds so weird. Exactly. <laughs> But let's try to, as you read more and you come across these words more and you apply their meanings into stick with your um, vocabulary. So, yes, time for open discussion. We talked about the book. Time for open discussion. The first question is, what do you think is the leading cause of divorce, increased divorce rate in Nigeria? What is the leading cause? What do you think is just the leading cause of the increased divorce rate in Nigeria? Any the master guy, okay, after her. Uh, you just wait. You don't see. No. Bro. I think you have to give him the mic. Let him. You know, viewer was expansion. So I'm um, looking at it carefully. Over time, mm. now we have always acted like Baba Shaggy, right? Mm. But if you think about it carefully, from. 2005 downwards, things have changed such that, I'm speaking facts, right? Yeah. Such that we, <laughs> with, with the growth in the internet, basically, um, women have come to women have come to realize that you know they can actually get to be independent. It will be it is not a global village where we can we can see basically what's going on overseas, and the culture overseas is very different from how it has been here. Now it is good to have and you know to to diversify, to blend in. But um, the the our culture does not allow these things. We we were raised in a certain way. The Americans were raised in a certain way. Our tradition, basically, as much as we can go into other spaces. So all I'm saying is the major reason why it has been common is because. Women these days, should I say women? <laughs> <laughs> they, they they want to stand alone, which is beautiful. However, it is natural that you know um, humility and submission. Now I'm not asking you to submit. No, I am saying when it comes to partnership, it comes with understanding. One has to. We cannot be equal. That's just it. We cannot be equal. It's natural. We cannot be equal. So it comes with somebody is the leader. I am working with you to grow this thing. So the reason why divorce has been consistent and has been increasing is because people want to take up certain roles which they cannot in a way handle themselves. Okay, so, wait. Yeah. Just wait, just wait like that. Okay, so you are saying that feminism is one of the cause. Uh you remember in the book, Bolanle felt forsaken. She felt very insecure. While Yasegi was building to become an independent woman, mm. she didn't think about marriage. Marriage was not on the goal, it wasn't in the goal plan. But then she got married 
and she didn't stay faithful. How did feminism enter inside? Well, no, like want to want to narrow it down into the book now. There are different courses for different situations. You cannot put the blanket like this. Collect, 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 collect. for me. When when he answered the question of leading causes, mm-hmm. it's like asking for leading causes of death. And if I mention a particular cause, I will not come to an hospital. You will not give me a case of somebody and tell me how it pertains to that person. He died for a particular different reason. What mm. happened in their own marriage did not have to be the leading cause, but leading cause still is. is that quite okay, understood? wait, let's read this way now. Okay. He said feminism. What is feminism itself? So, it, are you asking an actual definition or what? Yes, an actual now? definition. I don't know what it was told to me <laughs> is the radical idea that women have rights, which I honestly believe has always been a tool. But apparently, feminism is the radical movement to push that narrative. I thought feminism is pushing for gender equality. Yeah. You know, and that's literally what I said. Okay, that's what you Yeah, the radical about. movement that says women have rights. Okay, that means that's, the one that that's is not what, updated. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so oh. who else wants to add? Okay, you are not done. Oh, yeah. he, he wants to add something. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let him finish up. So, yeah. so yes, in my feminism is good. In the workplace, it should work. But when it comes to marriage, it will become troubling. It's, it cannot be handled. Because it is a partnership, as we say. And yes, that's it. Okay. Okay, okay, daddy. Who Don't mind me. Sorry, I kind of felt like the air around there changed when he mentioned feminism as an issue in marriage, right? Every no, I'm just saying what he did not see was that feminism was bad. Yeah. What he did not see was that feminism was, I don't know, the issue in the world. What he said was it was a leading cause in a certain thing. Mm-hmm. Many feminists don't even like the idea of marriage. So very well so what he said pans in, right? Mm-hmm. It was never supposed to be, you know, a bad thing. It's just saying this leads to that. It doesn't it didn't have to raise any if you give us your own view. All right, my personal view on why marriage is these days and is lack of foundation. You cannot stand and build anything on something that you had no reason why you started in the first place. It's the same reason why education is crumbling. Nobody knows why the fuck they are in school. We, we don't know. I spent seven years in Futa doing absolutely nothing. Yes, okay. So when you're in a marriage and you cannot find a, an answer to why am I here, it seem, it's, it's quite similar to being alive too. That's why everyone seeks purpose. If you cannot find an answer to why am I alive, what am I doing here? You most likely take the next option to off. So when so coupled with that, right? Coupled with the fact that everybody is now selfishly looking for how they would feel a lot better. The very moment this pleasure, this comfort comes into something you're supposed to be driven by passion and by reason and by uh, duty to something that should have an actual reason. The very moment you feel displeasure, the very moment you feel discomfort, you are often. So it's not even surprising. The very moment you you see a gym bro that comes to the gym because you know he likes the way everybody's you know pumped up. The day he benches something that passes the spirit, he's not coming back the next day. And I'm not surprised he's not coming back because he never had a reason to be there to start with. That's it. <laughs> Okay. In my own opinion, I feel like the divorce is at in place because unlike during the time of Baba Shaggy and his wives, where they feel like marriage is like like he affirmed me now, marriage was freedom for her. And Bolanle marriage was a means of escaping a dark past. But now, women these days, I think there's this realization that you can be more without being married. Not in the sense that marriage is not good. Of course, marriage is good. But then, men these days too. Baba Shaggy had three, four wives and children, and he still showed out all the responsibilities. 
But you are seeing men now that will be saying 50, 50, 70, 30. Men don't want to be. <laughs> men don't want tra- they don't want to be traditional men anymore, but they want a traditional woman. And I just feel like it cannot go. That's the word. It cannot work out because you don't expect to marry a wife that cooks, takes care of the kids. Maybe you won't tell her leave her job and stuff like that. And you're still expecting her to bring certain percentage. I never read in the whole of Baba Shaggy. I don't think I saw one place where Baba Shaggy was like, oh yeah, oh, my wife. Today food is the Afemi that will sponsor it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just feel like it's not as it used to be. There's enlightenment in the part of the women that okay they can be more for themselves and then well the men these days um i would say lack of home training <laughs> now that goes for both the male children and the female children in the sense that i feel like for the male children there are a lot of people that grow up seeing their fathers treat their mothers anyhow. Mm. There are people that grow up seeing their mothers treat their fathers anyhow. And those things have a way of affecting somebody. Mm-hmm. Even if the effects you may not see it immediately, but when you live in that type of dysfunctional family, mm. there is no way it's not going to affect. And a lot of times, these children don't see anybody to tell them that or what my father is doing is wrong, or what my mom is doing is wrong. And then a lot of them just grow up with, you know, um, Nigerian parents' expectations of, oh, my, I want my grandchildren before I die, and all of that, all of that. Mm-hmm. And then they get married, and things are not what they are supposed to be. And then you see the woman raising her voice at her husband, the husband beating pride, and the children being aware of it. Mm. and it just it just has a way that it affects that's why i feel like even if i feel like even if uh i don't know if even if you are going to fight as a husband and as a wife your children should not be privy to it especially when they are young because that's a way of affecting them you may not see that effect at the at their young age, but when they go, is obviously going to obviously going to affect them. So I think terrible people get married to terrible people, terrible people form terrible families. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how they don't discover terrible people doing their dating stuff. I'm like, how do you get married to somebody like this? Do you hide? Do you hide your fish or all those years you guys were together? And I was. Okay. <laughs> I also feel that um I agree with what Eni said that lack of foundation number one. Yeah. A lot of people go into relationships without even knowing what relationship is about. A lot of people are in relationships and they really don't know what marriage entails. I'm not married. <laughs> But it's very obvious. I think I can say, okay, some people I see around, I'm like, okay, what's even, what really are you doing in this relationship? It's just this way, like, it's just cruise and inshallah. You are not talking, you are not talking future. You are not, even up to how many children are we going to have? You don't have that discussion. It's just, 
hello babe hi what's up have you eaten have you slept where did you go how did your day go like it's just that cycle and okay we go on a date we come back again we take pictures we post we do date anniversary i what they call it we do it again and it's just this right and boom let's just see what happens we get married and we are now there and the reality dawns on us and we're like how did i see all this how did where all, all of a sudden it just became it didn't just become she didn't just become you didn't talk you didn't ask yourself real questions you didn't no so say like you don't you didn't ask yourself real question because by the time you get there you now realize hey, okay really what were we doing if we had spoken about this i don't think i should just get into marry my husband just tell me i want seven children when we get married when we were dating why did we why what stopped us from coming into that conclusion we saw marriage in view it's our future okay if i always came with the mentality of ah me i want to have 10 children you you are right from time you want to have two in our dating we will have maybe fought gone back and forth and we'll have come to a conclusion okay pata, pata, four. Yeah. we will have come to a conclusion i don't know if you yeah. get it is not it is not in marriage that some of those decisions are supposed to be made. So that was really what caused a lot of stress, a lot of mental disturb, emotional imbalances. I, I can't just deal with you. I can't just. You want me to have more children. I just want three. I mean, I've always wanted eight. Ah, much you're just hearing. Sometimes when we ask our parents, they're like, I never, you, I never knew your dad was like that okay i come from a my parents are splitted so along the line i was like oh like some of these things that like you didn't see i really have to ask like ah, why would that just be so my dad is the kind of person i just want to share my personal but that is not a person that once you do something like but it can repeat like it keeps talking about that thing after you've apologized give it over and over and over i'm like daddy stop this like I thought, mommy, like, how should when you guys did it, you didn't offend him once, like, to see that this thing was already in nature. Like, okay, guy, let's address this, or we call it squids. Now, you now have to get to the point that it's now reflex for him. My dad, we talk and talk and so that I'm like, daddy, you didn't take sand and create us. Calm down. <laughs> like, you didn't, give, you didn't give me this bread. Like, calm down. Talk to me, like, let's talk. I offended you, fine, but you now repeating it and saying more awful words over and over and over. It really can. The issue might be different, and I like it ends up doing more harm than good. So, like some of all these things that are little, you have someone that you can't offend them. Unforgiveness. Mm. Unforgiveness. You now get to the marriage. You now talk to someone that you just do something. The wife just para one week, two weeks. She doesn't say pee. She cooks your food. That's all. You just eat and that's all. You are even, you are even afraid that she can even poison. When you were dating, it should have, one of those things would have come up. And also in dating, like, they always tell us that when you're in a relationship, that love, the butterfly in your belly is at everything. I think it's something that maybe for anybody in a relationship or those that are yet to be in a relationship, we have to be very much conscious when we are in that stage. Because the butterfly in the belly will be there. Like that's the time whereby even when you are seeing the red signals, they become the green signals. Because like you are just full of the emotion you get. And a lot of times, most of those red flags they show in that time. So I think it's something we have to be very extra conscious of when we are in that butterfly in the belly stage. And we should not take anything for granted. You are talking, we're having a normal conversation. She shouts at you. He shouts at you. Okay, we calm down. Babe, what happened? What triggered that? If we have to treat it, if you have to tell the story of the kind of house you came from, I will know that I'm not attacking you. I'm attacking your background. It is discussion. Like, it's how we have to be very, very, very open with ourselves. We have to be very, very, very open with ourselves. Babe, what happened? I just said something and you sparked up. What happened? You really have to run me through your day. I can't say I want to be your wife and I should just be like, you are sorry, I saw and that. No, explain. Why did you do that? Babe, explain to me. Why did you have to shout at me? Why did you have to flare up? Why did you treat that woman like that? We were coming, you were, you were being all nice to me. She came all of a sudden and you just treated her like shit. What happened? What did she do? Let's ask ourselves questions. It's not just about cruise and inshallah. Like, it is different state that we should open everything up. Like, 
everything up. Nothing should be like nothing should be waved off. Nothing because I'm going to okay. I'm giving myself a maximum of maybe age thirty. I always say that okay. I want to live hundred. So I'm giving myself of age thirty that within age thirty I should have gotten married. So let's say at age thirty I get married. The next seventy years of my life. I will now endure never now. Like it's really terrible. I rather just stay unmarried than to now endure. And nobody is rushing me. I'm not rushing to get the ring. You should not also you should not rush to to make sure to to be among the clique of married men or married women. Let's take it slow and steady. The one we can work on. Let's list it out, babe. This has to change. Babe, I can't cope with this. Okay, this is it in you. I said that. Okay, I can manage. This is I said. I said, babe, if you don't treat this one, we call it quit. I think that's what dating and relationships are about. But a lot of people just do sex, sex, benefit, go out, enjoy, and it's just the old cycle. And boom. Okay, we get pregnant, we get married, and that's it. So I think that's it from my perspective. Take the mic again. That second one, go on, go on, that I spoke about. <laughs> I always say something. Okay. Now I want to bring from Christian's perspective. I'm a Christian, so you just come to me. Hey, um, okay. Some of them are not even bold. So let me go. To, let me go to Christian way, the church brothers way. Hey, sister, Moe, I was praying, and um, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, "You are my wife." <laughs> Okay, you come with me like that. So I think maybe we can looking towards and then she told you no after three days. Guess what he said? He said that the Holy Spirit denied is not enough. Yeah, it's not enough. Because if the Holy Spirit is very known in class, you know, so they are they are this. Uh, funny cases, but that's why the way who else wants to do it. You know, I shared a scenario where um, you know the person he told us, he knew his first person, let's go to him, sorry. So, you know the person he told us, okay, let me say, thanks for the question. So, you know the person he told us, but then the red flags, you know, and everything. So, I'm going to say that that would actually depend on the person himself or herself. Like in this generation, I mean, you know a lot of people that are like, that's how I am. That's why I am. I cannot change. That's just how I am. No, please. Nobody is just like that. Everybody is formed by the situations they've gone through one way or the other. And even apart from that, the people they've met, the people they've interacted And I would say that everybody has to make a. Uh, I don't know how to do this, but you have to make yes, a conscious decision to make yourself better. If you notice anything that you are doing that is not... Well, some people don't know that some things are wrong. But just make a very con conscious decision to make yourself better. Not just for... Not, just, not even for people. Leave people alone. Make yourself better for yourself. Because at the end of the day, if you're a better person, you're a better person. <laughs> yeah. so it's basically so for you. 
Yes, for other people too, but for you, you have to make that conscious effort and decision. Don't just be like, that's who I am. And no, no. Everybody has to make that conscious effort. As you said, uh, like, we know everything about. It's not possible for you to know everything about somebody. It's not possible. You may know a lot of things about her, but it is not possible to know every single thing about her. You don't know the thoughts they have. Everybody has interesting thoughts. Mm -hmm. Everybody has thoughts that even if someone finds out exactly, so you can't know everything about somebody, but you can try to uh, help that person, assist that person, even as they undergo their own journey of changing better for themselves and for us. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to enter into a space where it's, it's this particular uncomfortable state, but like the truth that everybody needs to get. Sometimes you do everything right and it's still gets fucked up. You do everything right at the right time with everyone right and it still gets fucked up. Welcome to life. Yeah. It, it happens. You you've taken every precaution you talk about it, right? You pushed as much as you can. You're patient. You listen to God. I mean it, it still leads to where it is. Right? You do not understand everything about everything. Alright? And this is where it's, it's, it, this is where it comes down to your function. Everything has to be where it starts from. If you yourself are not seated in some way from, if your understanding of what you are doing, if all you are here for is the results, what it looks like, once it disappears, there will be no reason for that. So there are some times that all the precautions are meant to be you don't work what you said and you did not ignore all those flags, you made sure I know that everything. And just like she said, you've known close to everything because you can't know everything, but you've known, you've done due research and you've taken that leap of faith and you still feel yeah, you, you would have to learn that these are things you live with. And in life, you are tested by the things you don't know come at you, right? Those moments where you have to realize so you have done everything and it still turns out that way. That's, those are moments that you really need to be within yourself and decide what you're going to do. Because it's not about, you know, anything outside you anymore. Not you anymore, it's just you now. down. That's the, the moment you get your strength. And you find strength in things that you don't know usually, are not usually around. Right, so that, I can't tell you what your core is. That's you for you to find. But those moments will happen. You can honestly have be the best. I, I can't find a better couple, even if like, the father and mother of his fault, there is not one of them that will not have issues, will have issues in his life, right? So even those ones, it now depends on if you know why you are there and you will keep sticking on to it. So it's, it's, it's don't, don't come at me, but yes, the very word of the idea, but it will happen. Yeah, I feel you, I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. So, you, you know, it, it sometimes it comes like that. You're just going to have to choose to rough it, you rough through it. You, you just vanish through it. I don't know. Hope doesn't make sense. I'm sorry, but, like, but that's what you do not do this. Now, on the side of God's head, huh? on the side of God's head, ladies and gentlemen, I want to, I want to. <laughs> I always try to, I, it in me when people do things like that, right? It's not, it's not an excuse. And I don't know where you found this your Bible as a woman. Because ridiculously, you carry these things out, and other people see it, and then they classify everything like that. And then, you know, suddenly everybody thinks God said it's not valuable at all. Right? God said to David, him being king. That nigga spent how many years in the wilderness? He was not king of shit. He did not step into the palace and stupidly walk to saw it. He would get his head cut off. I honestly do not know. Look, you being prophesied to is only someone in, someone who has 
in my head, telling you what to do. You still have to walk that way. When God says to me about the thing, brother, naturally, naturally, even if you are king, should get my bro, you get king. Once God says to me about the thing, the confidence comes through for us. My reason is not. So when you get that, but like you get, but like I'm, I'm going with a lot more certainty. You get, I'm not questioning that. Now, of course, you will have thought. But it's more of, is she going to, you know, am I going to, how do I go about this? Less of, am I sure this is it or not? You have to get that, that is a better approach for you. Not, hey woman, an higher authority said I should command or turn to you. My bro, how do you want to continue such a relationship? I don't know what's, I don't know what, I So when you want when you want to get that to you know, farm, you know, you know it's, it's cold in the night. We the Lord fish for you. Wait, let me connect you. You know that in the church society, yeah. and I believe it's not just church, I'm not a Muslim. I don't resent anybody that's Muslim here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I don't know if it's also done that they, the first thing they tell you, you know, we are advised in church personally that after when you are about getting married, you pray ahead. Yeah. Then when you pray ahead, try to pray to know the person. Why is everybody looking for friends? They don't say that. Why are you looking for friends? You don't get to the person to pray. Exactly. You don't get to the person to pray. I'm serious. They are advised that they tell them that pray to know the person. So usually they get the word that, okay, when this person calls, have you not seen their story on Instagram? They are like, no, be like, they are like, when I pray, I don't pray to know the person. I went to the Bible where I received peace. It was exactly what God had told me earlier. Amen. So wait, 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 wait. They don't encourage you to know the person as a friend. Because if it is like the natural society, we advise that let it be a friend before it graduates. So when you are a friend, you would have known the best thing. Like you will know the best thing head to toe. You might not know all because when you fall in love, some things you graduate. Mm. But we always advise, you know, the church is against dating. And that is because. Which church? Let's not mention. 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 But there are churches that don't advise. I remember uh, when I was growing up in my church, usually when you are about to maybe marry someone, especially if it is a sister in the church, you first go to the pastor. Mm-hmm. Ah. The pastor will now call this. Thank you. So it's yeah, it is like you are you are from the morning time. Oh, no, you got I'm, 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 I'm an Ethan. Oh, okay. All right. So the sister will go to meet the brother. Yeah. Then when the sister meets the brother, oh sorry. Pastor. Pastor. She will meet the pastor. Yeah. Then the pastor will now talk to the sister and say, okay, yeah. this brother is like this. So then they will ask both of them to go and pray. Now, when both of them pray, and then they feel like God has answered the prayer that this is mine, she is mine, is mine, then the pastor mediates them. You, you've not heard of people that tell you that they, I still watch the video today where the marriage committee says you have to book in church before they can. So, so can, I, can, I, can I quote this a bit? Can I, can I kind of like put it first in the first place? So I'm not here again. I am not here to step on them. I believe all cultures are experienced based on everyone has tried something. I knew our ancestors sat down with their own sense and saw what they saw worked and turned it into tradition. Nobody will make tradition or something that has worked that did not work. That is not sensible. That is not how human beings. Right? So I am not stepping on any culture. Most of our parents or ancestors were arranged, yet many of them found love in that relationship. It's not, it's not, see, we, 
what I said to you is not what you are asking about. However, it is that it came about what you meant, right? Again, I just told you that David was imposed on Israel as the king was not. But this man still walked his way into their heart, did he not? Isaac was found his wife by, is it any better? Elias, was it? No. Yeah, yeah, by uh, Abraham Sabbath. That was literally the spirit of God leading, was he not? Isaac still found his way to our heart. That was what he, he understood. Even it's not it's not like command, but even if after you obey it, right? Even after you obey it, how you how you stand to hold what you've been promised is by leading yourself to be worthy of it, right? Finding your way into it. Every one of these people, no matter how no matter how it is that you found, right? However, it is that you and I do believe in the supremacy of the only potent. And there's, I do believe that there's an intelligence above me, and I know it is, alright? I'm willing to preach that. But whatever it is, and church culture, like every other culture, was built over time by people that, you know, try to create a system, because systems is what leads them, right? The person that is right here, right now, leading, might not be able to oversee things if he knows he's old or dead. They need laws. That kind of you know arrange things once in so that everything can be in order. Right? The laws themselves, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm going to do it as well. The laws themselves that Moses had down were a problem when the manifestation of the Lord, I understand. When the manifestation of the Lord Himself, Christ Jesus, came. How is it that the law and the people that were pulling the law were somehow at longer ends with Christ? Why? Because they didn't know why the law was there, they didn't care. The, law, the, the laws of God, God himself didn't matter to them. What they could do with those laws, how they could rule people with them, how they could turn it to their own good, how they could feel something with those laws, how that was them down to the man that they had the laws. So when the law manifested in the flesh, they hated it. In fact, they, they, you know how many laws they said they broke? It was called blasphemous. That's why it was cute. So it's not. See, all the, as well as this good that, you know, all these things were built with the art of letting the other and they do work. It is as important. The law still did not lose his importance. Even as you do not see the king ever abolish the law, even upon that, even upon the fact that he tried to use the law to make him seem like a sinner. You see, you see the difference. I'm not saying throw away culture or the other. I'm not here to step on the other. I'm saying use it to find what you are looking for. It all still comes down to knowing why you are getting married to stop this. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that you're going to, even if an algorithm picks up, people have found love through the Tinder. Whatever, whatever finds it for you, know what you're looking for. If you do not, you will not see it. Right? That's how it goes. You, once, if you are seeking it yourself, when God says, right? You will not want to make the person that you are going to feel uncomfortable. Hence, you will not go with God's sake. Even do you know God's sake. So, you create that. It, it means something different to you when you are actually going for something. It's your, your desire that kind of, you know, it's what you're looking for. What's your, what's your, the way your goal is, kind of forms what you actually use like in your yeah. country. That's what you enter into your life. You could use the same tool and look like you, you can look like you said all the right things. And then you can use the same tool and sound like you are trying to impose. It's the same tool. Uh, okay, during the media, most of So, can you give us from a. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 Remember in the house, represent. So, give us. Are you serious? 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 Okay, well, give us from your own perspective, whether as a Muslim or a traditionalist, um, with the word of dating and spiritualism. And <laughs> no, you get what we've been saying since, yeah? 
I don't know if they do it in the Muslim culture or if they think it's like encourage, like know your spouse, um, get to know the person before marriage, or it's like arranged and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I cannot speak for the Muslims, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. However, uh, so <laughs> times have changed though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not how we do it anymore. We we are born modern. I'm not gonna hold trash and understand. We are born modern. So we right, so we go find our woman, we bring them down to we so we live more in the orientation instead of uh, you know the very business. Because we believe the family is the origin of everything that grows. So therefore we go get our woman or get a man bring them down to the family, especially to the uh, to the and it takes us down to okay, so um <laughs> we go we go to okay. we don't actually go to the shower anymore because as I said things are modernized. So we don't do all the what you should say anymore. Just family and that's all. Then from there we go so we do the regular engagement. So the point is in the current state we look for our woman, we follow the natural process of, um, what do you call it? Yes, but, um, what do you call it? Money. Money. Please. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Alright, All right. thank you so much. Okay, it's at Uh, 
um, is the exact responsibility of these things. Times are changing, and uh, the way we, we are telling growth from our, our background and telling matters, and uh, we, should, we should find a way to ensure that we allow our children to have a sense of um, security with us. Mm -hmm. And don't, don't tell your child that there's nothing my child should not be able to tell me. I should be my child's best friend. Yes. Exactly. My daughter should be my best baby. So that's how I let, let, let her know what's going on from the inside, not from the outside. That they um, you know, they don't say this. I remember when we were going, when, when my, friend, my, my friends were going to the dinner, he 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 guy touches the lady, she goes pregnant, and she gets pregnant. Yeah. I remember then my mother sat myself and my sister there were like, hmm, it's not about the normal touch. It goes beyond the touch. You have you have other things that you have the characteristics that would ensure that the lady gets pregnant. Yeah. And then um, these are things that you should know. She was very open. She was very open. And we had that conversation. And she was not orientating the lady. You know, you should, you should also look at this. The guys should, should be well orientated. Because you should not, um, you know, I, I, I hear things like that. Um, it, it, we are different kind of um, how our bodies move on. And there are some guys that will tell you that come on, I can't, I can't, I can't see the you know, the lady. That's something not happening. You don't bring, you don't need to bring guys like that. But you know they are they are the way they are telling me is quite different. And their kind of exposure is also different. So you should be able to uh, build the foundation first before you guys consider saying that mom I'm grown up. Um, we not know that some of us have this kind of relationship that we still have I have very high regards to my spirit. You know? I get not to say this to them outside. I know what the repercussion will be. At the same time, you should not suppress their, their feelings, don't suppress their expression. Now, uh, even if it is stupid, even if it's making a suggestion that is not making sense, it makes sense out of what I like to say. Because the child starts building from there. Okay, I think okay, this is where content starts. Then you start talking, you build it all, then it takes and work up from that. So, as I've said, from the early days of that saying, um, the family should not take the full responsibility. However, the family has a very big responsibility to actually to make to ensure that uh, things work out well in the society. And the society is, is uh, gaining. Because we have limited a lot of people from the paper around. Come on, I tell you, I do I just set this down with my family. I don't go to be in that family. And there is this what is called three points. You don't, you don't, the family is not the source for a so or contributor to the growth of a child. In fact, we all have a different dynamics, different body, the way we are built up. The family is just takes a huge percentage. So the society has its own percentage. The person itself has its own personality. That's what makes up a man. That's why you see that, oh, the character that is in this guy is that not in his father. They must have gotten the character somewhere. Man, have gotten his build up somewhere. So it means you must, you must start to address issues like this from the onset, from the cradle. Okay, let's start talking. Let's go out on the The first date your daughter should have not be the first date with the guy. So go with your guy. Your I want to have a deal with my daughter, I want us to go out, I want us to chill. So that's where we discuss. So the girl like, ah, like there's this guy in this class is coming. You won't tell the girl your daughter that I don't go with this girl, no. You're good friends. But tell them, tell them, let her know the do's and don'ts. Come on. There is there's a limit to your friendship. There are some things that you should not do. And so that when things get to that stage, you start telling you things. Like, oh, these are the things that are going on. It's not, the scolding should not come as first. I'm not saying it's not school, but the scolding should not be the best thing. I don't, I don't, I don't like the way I can behave. So you should be able, before the child goes to the fact that oh, you cannot no longer, no longer train. You must have started to train. So if you don't, if let's tell the mom that saying that I'm 15 years old, I can do what I can do, I can do whatever I like, it means the relationship between the girl and the family is, um, there's a gap. So that gap needs to be filled. For them to have, for them to be on the same page, and you also look at the, the parents. 
there might be some similarities that come on, you don't, you don't have you don't have the right to tell me this because you also what you do is even worse than what you are telling me. So I've only done little things and you're actually capitalizing on it. For instance, the father that she's not going to tell your son, not so. <laughs> we are looking at the behavior, we are not looking at your words. Action speaks louder than words. So you don't so you must also be a role model. So you model whatsoever you want to um, you want for your kids, that what you want your, your children, your offspring to do, you also model them to do that. So that when they grow up, you will say that, okay, uh, thank you. So the child will say that, my parents will not do this. It's a very good thing, even though we are actually taking, we are taking steps away from this, but it's a very good thing for you to say that this person comes from a very good form. I think I like the background. And these are things we, and when we say something about God said that this and that, so we're trying to digress. The first thing we should look at is God has spoken to our person. And you are not with God. And, and God, God is not saying to you. When you say God showed you, God is saying that, okay, go to that person and express yourself the way you should express. And it's not a bad thing for a person to say no. Even if scripture says the spirit of God has appeared to all men, teaching us to say no. If we don't see the qualities we like in the garden, it's a normal thing. In fact, in fact, what what made what made Adam love Eve was the fact that he saw this body and said, "Wow!" The concept of woman comes from the word "wow," man. Mm. And they know that it's truly committed 
But the problem might is um, when the visioneer is not seeing the vision. <laughs> For instance, the lady is seeing a very bright future. But the guy is just being, uh, doesn't care how life tosses him or her. That's where the lady comes and gives accurate direction. We are working towards this goal. So and whenever you see that uh, there is a deviation, if that cannot be addressed, then you know that you know that oh, we have to stay. We have to find a way to address this or the cut it off. So that's that's just it. And so we must be able to see visions, understand who or who the person you are going out is. You, you can't just as you have said, you don't can't know everything about the guy. In fact, the boys that are married keep learning new things about their spouses every day. Like, okay, I never knew you like this, okay. Okay, but how do you address this? So it means they've already made a, 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 a vow that comes, whatever happens, we are yeah, going to we are going to challenge, we are going to go through the challenges together, we are going to overcome together. Um, but it's not about abuse. If someone is abusive, it's not the best for you. The person that you need to see a therapist, the person the person needs to the person needs to, uh, the person needs to get himself resolve things within himself. Exactly, or herself, yeah. and because they just want to be very, very temperamental and then abusive. Mm -hmm. And so, but you should be able to say that okay, these are the areas you need to address away. And don't go into relationship with someone you know that he has actually uh, done something to you in the past, maybe he has abused you, you know, slapped you, you know. like, you see the red flag, like, 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 come on, it's going to kill you. Okay. Um, <laughs> 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 The thing is to understand that when 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 Lucifer himself obey and disobey God, God did not give Lucifer the second chance. So he was rebellious. rebellious. He was rebellious and like, come on, I can't bring him with a rebellious personality. You have to move down. Mm -hmm. So you must, I'm not saying that um, you should not give some good chances, but you should you should create a boundary mm -hmm. and you know the kind of thing you want to go into. And be sure that this person is totally in before you yeah. before you put yeah. yourself in that uh, that circumstances. And um, you know, another thing is uh, we we evolved from for better for worse. It's very important. I want to say that for good for better for best, right? These are things that is actually common in marriages. You love the guy when he has money, and when the guy has no money, like come on, love don't yeah. finish. I can't, I can't go back to school one. I can't, I can't exactly, I can't go back to school one. And I feel that's why most guys too is they are finding it difficult to get married. They don't feel, why not just date and have sex and give the girl, let the girl go until I'm ready. I'm sure that I want to actually engage myself with this and I'm ready to, to go into a relationship. So they feel get and the more they they do that, they tend not to get married because they feel they've got everything they want. They have the friends, they have the sex, they have the most of them they may not even have the, 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 the money to talk about. They are they yeah. feel they feel satisfied. Yeah. And that they, they yeah. feel satisfied and they don't see any reason to go beyond yeah. yeah. in what they are doing. I think that's that's we got them. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's give the mind to Jerusalem. We don't want to bear with them. I have a very special question for you. I think you wanted to answer on the children. Okay, we'll talk about children. Please make it very brief. We have limited time. So, what I want to say is concerning the perverseness of the children, I feel like family has, it's no, it's no easy to blame it on one particular group because raising a child is not a one man job, it's not a two person job, it's not even a four person job. The entire society that comes together and shape who the person is supposed to be. So, but the bulk of the responsibility falls on the parents in the sense that the shock value that is in all those things that can provide the child, I feel like it's on the part of the parents to reduce the shock value of these things. Because in the area of sex or drugs or morals, like those things that children see outside that excites them and that piques their curiosity that they want to know more about like what is this thing about and parents never talk about something like that. So they want to delve into that thing completely. Just like 
let's just say it's children that are parents are going to come out. Mm. The day they step out, oh, they will not want to go back inside the house. They will explore to the explore. They will become Dora the Explorer. They will want to go everywhere. They want to see everything. They want to know everything. So I feel like it's on the part of the parents to expose them gradually mm. to that kind of thing. It reminds me of one man, a man in America. The man became a new snake venom. Why? Because he was taking it in small concentrated doses. You take one milligram today, another two weeks, it takes two milligrams, another three weeks, it takes three milligrams. So the extent that the man became immune to uh, black mamba's venom, the snake gave him two bites and the man was fine. Because he has been taking all the distance. He has an immunity already. So I feel like it's on the part of the parents to build the immunity of children. It's not that they won't get exposed to it, but it's not going to affect them in the negative. See me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I want you to tell us, everybody has spoken well, I want to talk about broken women and insecurity. Yes. No, no. Men, men answer better for women on this issue. So, how do you, would you advise someone? Uh, assuming is broken in a certain way. You know that when someone is broken, they have a certain mentality mm -hmm. in, a, in a certain area. They just have this mindset. For instance, they can have the mindset that uh, I have to work. They get so they don't want to chase career because of the fear of failure. Some it might be in the aspect of not working and you know going after men instead. I mean, we also all have to do. Uh, on this point. So, how would you advise women to heal from insecurity? They may be broken, but how could they heal? I, I, you didn't finish the book, but you definitely read the insecurities of Bonami. Because of her insecurity, she literally married Baba Chegi. She could have healed and gone for something better. So, how do you advise? So that question is wild. Hmm? Question is wild. How do you advise somebody to heal from insecurity? Legal insecurities, you know. <laughs> well, they, so looking at it carefully, see, it's really it's, it's pretty interesting because it reshapes it reshapes you entirely. See, you you ah, okay. So let me use myself as an example. Uh, when every time I go into a relationship, I it becomes an obsession for me. I am obsessed with this person. I so the very minute I do not get the very minute is not reciprocal. I I withdraw, and the withdrawal could lead to me pulling away, pata pata, and you know trying to just not wanting to have anything to do with this person. So the question is, how do I Get better. Oh, no. I can answer that question. Okay, come on. Okay, Ini. Uh, Ini, you want to answer that question? Yes, Ini. Alright, so question of security. Like you said, I'm answering for someone else. Like, like, it's not really like you're answering for someone else. No, yeah. Assuming you have a Who's insecure? That's the question. for me. Yeah. Yeah. If I was to answer for my insecurity, I'd like, stop like deep introspection. I'd like, to do especially in front of people. I cannot go indoors and start looking more insecure right now. Like, you okay. know, I'm saying I just started like that. Okay. Now, this one, our our advice is start and your experiences. How do how do affect one? Like you said, it form you. I've seen insecurities change people's physical. <laughs> Legit change your own posture and this could use is just because of the thought that gets stuck in your head. You have defects based on that insecurity. Your own posture, your own your body, which are your gaze, that already in your head. So <clears throat> how to do that? It's first of all accepting a young woman. 
it's not the one I'm accepting that you're wrong. Everybody has excuses to why you do what you do. Until you accept that something you are doing, don't mind not be bad. This is what I listen to an artist, Enes, and he's very deep about how it airs and he's you know uh, trying to always he has to see to always trying to get him and throw something else from else from out the past to catch up with him. I've led him to where he is now. Basically he sings about that thing and it became a platinum record holder because of that fear and anger. Things traumatic things that he holds on to that basically kills his career. He has to answer the question honestly that is he willing to heal from that and might let go of what it has grown. Some people's insecurities have helped them grow a better career. Some people's insecurities have kind of made them more confident. However, you know, sometimes our confidence is born out of lack of confidence in some ways. We are very loud about how strong and tough. Like we said, Kabash, everything that was said was if you would not look back to his friends. See him as a very proud and confident person. If we do not look back on his life, we will not think it was beautiful. So your insecurities would they would they would be they, they would facilitate something that you actually enjoy having and it's my actually being good. But you have to be honest.